This video is brought to you by Azrock and the Z490 Phantom Gaming ITX Thunderbolt 3. This is the only Z490 ITX system that I have tested that I will gleefully say, yes, absolutely. This system, even if you're going to run a 10900K, even if you're going to run a 10900K at 5.3 gigahertz, this ITX motherboard can deliver that to you. It's got a high-end Nehemic audio implementation, Thunderbolt 3, 9 VRM phases, 90 amp you know, 90 amp chokes for your V-Core. Dr. Moss, it's a really, really high-end implementation. It's got dual cooling fans for your VRM, but they do not kick on unless you have insufficient airflow in your case for the VRMs because, you know, they're overheating and they're, they're running really hot. Yeah, it's got Wi-Fi 6, the Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN. It is really nuts how much ASRock has managed to cram in an ITX form factor this small. Check out my full review because it's not often that I'm this excited about a motherboard. There's not enough PCB real estate to do everything they needed to do. So they went vertical. There's a vertical PCB that has your extra connections, dual M.2 and all the other stuff that you need to do this because goodness gracious, there's a lot of stuff on this motherboard. Oh man, Apple switching to ARM and the developer ARM workstations have already gone out. And then somebody said, hey, wait a minute, are you going to support, uh, you know, Thunderbolt on this new platform? And they're like, you betcha, it's an open standard, we're totally going to support it. But I'm here to tell you there's more to the story than just that. So... Thunderbolt, <laughs> me and the PCIe over USB-C technology that Intel has trademarked as Thunderbolt, we've got a long and storied history. I got it working on second gen Threadripper. Yeah, wasn't really a big deal. Turns out Thunderbolt is actually fairly open already. And then third gen Threadripper happened, and there are some motherboards that officially come with, you know, you can buy the Gigabyte Designator, for example, and it's got built-in Thunderbolt. Well, it's got built in USB-C, PCIe over USB-C. We can't, I don't know if it's certified as Thunderbolt, but you know, you can watch some of my old videos and it's like, ah, we've got the external GPU dock and some other Thunderbolt peripherals. There are a couple asterisks and gotchas, things like daisy chaining devices and allocating downstream bus numbers. But by and large, hot plug PCI Express basically works, which is really awesome because you know, that's a platform other than Intel's platform that supports Thunderbolt. But there's actually a lot of really insane things under the hood. I mean, have you ever stopped to consider the insanity of USB-C? I mean, we have USB-C that's USB 2.0, and then we have USB-C that's five gigabit USB 3.0, and then we have a USB-C connection that carries Thunderbolt. We can have a USB-C connection that carries USB, but not DisplayPort, like display signals. We can have another type of USB-C cable that carries just Thunderbolt, but not USB-C successfully, like USB type peripheral uh, connectivity. That's, that's also a thing. There are charge cables, like, uh, you know, Anchor has some USB-C charge cables that are only good for charging. They literally don't carry any Thunderbolt or any USB devices at all. The USB-C port on the back of your RTX graphics card from NVIDIA is different than the USB-C port that's on your motherboard. If you get a, you know, one of the fancy displays that use a USB-C type connector, you plug it into your motherboard, nothing is gonna happen. Unless you've got like the ASRock Phantom Gaming ITX, which has an onboard, you know, display port input. So you could run a cable from your graphics card to the DisplayPort input and then use the onboard USB-C on your motherboard and actually get a display out, which would support both USB and display. Yeah, this is insane. Like if, you know, you could go back in time a couple of years and it's like, there's all these ports on your computer that look the same, but they behave completely differently depending on what you plug into them. Somebody would say that you were an insane, crazy person and this is the most user unfriendly thing of all. Even Apple has struggled with this. The MacBook Pro, we've got four Thunderbolt ports. Well, ah, not so fast there, chief. <laughs> One side is PCI Express by four lanes. The other side is PCI Express by two lanes. So depending on where you plug in your Thunderbolt dock, you're not gonna get consistent performance out of your Thunderbolt dock. And of course, you know, Apple, it just works. No, well, there's, there's some asterisks and caveats and some gotchas there. We're looking at a new platform, you know, from AMD where PCIe lanes are all built into the CPU and that kind of thing should be less of a problem because historically, on the Intel side, those Thunderbolt PCI Express lanes have gone through the chipset. And the interface from the chipset to the CPU is basically the same bandwidth as Thunderbolt 3. And now we have Thunderbolt 4, which is basically the same as Thunderbolt 3 in terms of interface specification and speeds. Again, because mostly it's not using CPU lanes. So you mean to tell me that it's going to be faster at the connection from the Thunderbolt port to the chipset than it is from the chipset to the CPU? 
Ah, that's dumb. So yeah, Thunderbolt 4 is not about higher speed connectivity. It's more about power delivery and uh, the DisplayPort specifications because a lot of manufacturers were opting for sketchy DisplayPort 1.2 support only, which you can only drive a single 4K monitor at 60 Hertz with that. Yeah, so the state of Thunderbolt is more insane than you, than you think. Okay, I'm gonna peel it back another layer. Titan Ridge, Alpine Ridge, the relatively recent Thunderbolt chipsets, those pieces of silicon have had a lot of errata. A lot of errata, which means that uh, there have been a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes made in hardware. And some of those problems are unfixable. So certain things like an external GPU might work, but an external mixing board might not work. And it depends on which version of the chipset that you have. Apple, to their credit, has actually done a lot of qualification and testing and have found a lot of bugs in the silicon. They don't really want to talk about it publicly. I've got a couple of sources inside Apple where it's like, you know, we were on like Rev C of this particular piece of silicon for the Thunderbolt interface before we could sort of get it the way that we wanted it. So all of this to say, what about Thunderbolt on ARM? Well, the first obvious problem is that AMD has struggled to get certification from Intel. It appears, it appears to me, I don't have a source on this. It just, from the outside looking in, you know, with uh, Gigabyte and some of the other vendors where I've been able to hack together uh, Thunderbolt support on Asus, Gigabyte, and ASRock motherboards before it was officially supported. And then we see ASRock and uh, Gigabyte sort of timidly supporting Thunderbolt over a USB-C type connection or supporting PCI Express over USB-C type connection, being very careful not to really call it Thunderbolt. Uh, ASRock being a little more bold than Gigabyte in that regard or Gigabyte bundling a Thunderbolt controller from Intel, which I think you can call Thunderbolt. It's like, well, it's, it comes with a non-Intel motherboard. It comes with this lovely Threadripper motherboard. It's like, oh, look at that. It does actually happen to work. Probably not certified by Intel, but it really does feel like and look like on the outside that Intel is slow walking those certifications. Now, it might be that literally everything on at Intel is on fire on the inside, and they just don't have the resources to do the qualification or you know, they may want a lot of money to do the qualification to certify something for Thunderbolt compatibility because they themselves apparently have gone through three revisions of silicon in order to get properly working Thunderbolt peripherals and monitors and things like that for Apple. Um, and I certainly, I think some of the partners have experienced that because there are, you know, Rev A, Rev B chips, I know, and, and they're available. Like this is the Aorus uh, GTX, you know, 1070 gaming box. And there are like Rev A and Rev B uh, chipsets that are a thing with the Thunderbolt interface on this side that have certain compatibility quirks. So that's the first problem, certification. Will Intel certify the ARM platform for Thunderbolt? Given that they've slow walked it on AMD, don't think so. Think that's going to be an uphill battle for Apple. Now, does Apple have the, you know, station wagon of cash to just make that problem go away? Yeah, certainly. They've got more money than every other company on planet Earth, or at least disposable cash income. So they can probably make that go away uh, no matter sort of what the situation is. The second problem is quirks. Uh, Thunderbolt is equal parts, like properly well-defined architecture for PCI Express and bailing wire and duct tape. It is almost as many bugs as actual real intentional features at this point because it's a, it was a hack and then it was the thing and then there was some other things and then there was layers of insanity added to that and then PCI Express 4 tries to reel in some of the insanity because vendors you know sort of play it fast and loose but I think it's too little too late I think that Thunderbolt is is going to be problematic on other platforms because of the uh, loose nature of the specification and now I know Intel and Apple worked together on the Thunderbolt specification and Apple certainly has their idea of how they would expect it to work, which is one of the reasons why they tool so long on some of that Thunderbolt compatibility. But if we look across the market at the compatibility issues and insanity that companies like CalDigit have had to go through to build their Thunderbolt docks, which are still kind of sketchy and still, you know, not exactly the way that they should be. If we look at the 2013 Mac Pro with its uh, you know, older Thunderbolt combination mini DisplayPort and dealing with the insanity of like the low voltage variant of DisplayPort out of that for the level one KVM. 
it is enough to turn my hair gray because it's just so frustrating and just so much dumb stuff like just just really just dumb stuff and so that's the intel side and some of that's just the apple engineering side but these are going to be real problems on the arm platform so i think that you sort of have to approach this pragmatically. You can't approach it from the specification, the ivory tower of specifications. I think you have to approach these kind of problems by looking at all of the Thunderbolt devices that are in the market. Apple is gonna have to basically buy and have on hand several instances of all of the various Thunderbolt devices that people will have. It's not just gonna be eGPUs, it's gonna be a lot of music devices and other things like that. I think they're going to have to buy those devices and sit down and really work with the vendors and really work with everybody to get that done. So I reached out to a couple of uh, companies that have popular Thunderbolt devices other than GPU docks to see if I could get a feeler on, hey, are you already working? You know, I know that you can't probably disclose any details, but can you at least tell me if you're already working with Apple on Thunderbolt? Now, most people, I haven't heard back from anybody. I've been waiting a couple of weeks. Nobody said anything. Maybe this video is going to prompt some information. Maybe I'll get some new information. But the people that I have heard back from so far have said, no, you know, we reached out to Apple and they said, oh, don't worry. Uh, somebody's going to contact you in a few months. If we're a year away from a Mac that supports Thunderbolt, that's probably not going to be enough time. I mean, that's really sketchy. That's also assuming that ARM, the way that Apple imagines it, is going to have enough plumbing to be able to do Thunderbolt. Think about all the Thunderbolt vulner vulnerabilities. A lot of those are around uh, using direct, you know, DMA, direct memory access to read and write from system memory. And Thunderbolt 3, the later versions of it with later silicon, kind of have some stuff in there to disable ports and manage that and all this other kind of stuff. And so is Apple doing a top-down architecture on this on Thunderbolt in order to have all of the Thunderbolt functionality and all of the plumbing on the ARM side? Because there is a lot of physical hardware plumbing beyond just PCI Express bridges um, that this thing needs. And it also needs good and sane security handling and all of that kind of stuff. And I tried to look over... Uh, job listings for Apple for the last 36 months looking for Thunderbolt engineers and some other stuff like that. And I did actually find some promising results where it looks like, okay, Apple is probably hiring some expertise if they're filling this position, this position, and this position. They probably are thinking about these kind of things. But again, I think the only way that they're going to be able to deal with this is to actually buy a lot of devices. And I don't, I think, I don't... I really doubt that Apple's gonna do that, is, is really what it comes to. Like, thinking about it and thinking it through my head, thinking about all of the different non-Apple peripherals that are Thunderbolt, how likely do you think it is, given your experience with Apple products, if you're an Apple product enthusiast, how likely do you think it is that Apple is really doing a lot of qualification and is really, you know, holding their arms out and really working with third-party companies to make sure that their Thunderbolt devices will work properly on the new Apple ARM platform? Yeah, I didn't think so. Not not great, huh? I mean, yeah, let's just face reality. Look at Apple's partnerships with other companies. Even companies that would drive, you know, wild uptick of like the Mac Pro, like the, the wildly, you know, overpriced Mac Pro, like Avid, like the Avid add-in cards and all the stuff that go with that. Yeah, Apple hasn't lifted a finger, as far as I can tell, to really do anything to help out those guys in video production and their PCIe hardware and their capture hardware. It's just, oh, it's PCI Express and you gotta deal with it. But then it's like, mm, it's a Xeon platform and Intel. And Intel really did a lot of the work here. I can't tell that Apple really did much to help those companies at all. So because of that, I have a really um, poor outlook for Thunderbolt on Apple ARM devices. Now, it could be that by the time that we get a second or a third generation, Apple ARM device with Thunderbolt, maybe it'll be better. Maybe they will have gotten the Intel qualification. I don't know. But given what we see in the Linux kernel, getting the Linux kernel to work and, you know, that kind of thing, sort of a pain. It's too bad that we don't have another platform that we can experiment with. You know, I've got Threadripper, but Threadripper is x86. It's too bad that we don't have a lightweight platform that we can experiment with Thunderbolt on and see how it goes. Oh, wait. Oh, oh my gosh, is that is that the RISC-V board with Thunderbolt? 
yeah, this hasn't gone well. Of course, I'm just one guy, one insane person that's just banging on a RISC-V development board with an old school Thunderbolt 2 card and the Linux kernel, but uh, it's not terrible. It's actually better than I expected, but working on this is what makes me say that Thunderbolt is at least as much quirks and bugs as it is actual deliberate engineering. And well, I'm getting too technical. I'm just gonna leave it at that. But getting Thunderbolt working on RISC-V, that's a thing. Western Digital has actually done a fair bit of work on this if you know where to look on the internet. It's not everything. It's not, it's not totally everything for what you need, but it is actually a lot of the plumbing that you need to be able to support this. I was kind of surprised because of the whole DMA and that kind of thing. But then the quirks. Thunderbolt quirks are non-trivial. So I, uh, based on that, I'm not, based on my work on this, I don't, I don't think Apple's going to get it right. You know, granted, I don't know, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Thunderbolt person and a team of like eight people working on it inside Apple that are all super smart and super know what they do, they're doing, probably going to have better luck than one rando that's just working on it in their spare time. Uh, and you know, risk five is different than arm obviously, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I just don't see Apple doing this given their history of performance. I tried to find a parallel from the last time that they converted. Firewire. Firewire on PowerPC to Firewire on x86. Any of you, uh, you, you, you older folks in the audience, you were around for PowerPC, you had, you had some Firewire peripherals, and then move over to PC. There was a lot of quirks and gotchas, weren't there? Yeah, you can, it's hard to find because it was a little bit before the real proliferation of the internet, but there are articles in magazine like Byte and PC World where we're talking a little bit about the Firewire standard and some of the problems with the transition to x86 on the Firewire side. Now eventually, you know, PCs, yeah, they had Firewire and eventually it got there. So, but Thunderbolt is an order of magnitude more complicated than Firewire. So, there's also that. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll, we'll come back to this video in a few years when Thunderbolt on ARM is a thing and new Thunderbolt peripherals on ARM working is fine. But the stuff that you have today, the hardware that you have today, and it's quirks and oddness, and it's, it's revision A chipsets on this side, I don't, uh, I'm not hopeful. But, you know, what do I know? I'm Wendell, this is level one. This video is just me talking. But, eh, I'm signing out, I'll see you later. <laughs>